Welcome. Today we are going to discuss uh, how optical waves or electromagnetic waves um, interact with the interface between two materials or the interface between the material and the uh, free space. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Um, so, essentially, what uh, we um, can find is that uh, electromagnetic waves, when they um, when there is a, a, a material between two, sorry, an interface between two materials, so let's say this is refractive index one, refractive index two, uh, what happens when an electromagnetic wave comes into, um, into this interface? Well, what happens is that uh, part of this radiation will be reflected, part of this radiation will be transmitted, and the question is, how does that happen? And many of you will have heard of uh, the Snell's law and, and where it comes from. But uh, let's try to um, see uh, where the Snell's law comes from. Um, so uh, fir first things first, um, what governs the behavior of um, electromagnetic waves uh, is basically what we call the uh, Maxwell's equations, we, which I will just draw here uh, very quickly. So. First of all, we have that the divergence of um, the electric field is, let's say, equal to zero. It's actually equal to the, the, the uh, charge density. But let, let's think of uh, just dielectric materials for the moment. So um, materials where there is no charges actually uh, accumulated anywhere. Uh, we have that the divergence of the magnetic field um, uh, is equal to zero as well. Uh, and we have that the um, um, curl of the electric field is equal to minus mu um, the derivative of h with respect to time. And we have that the curl of the uh, magnetic field is going to be um, minus um, sorry, no, not minus, plus, um, um, plus um, the um, uh, derivative of the electric field with respect to time. Again, in the absence of currents and other uh, uh, sources. So, um, okay, from, from these two equations, um, I just want to make a few notes around them. So we, we, we're taking the scenario where the current density is equal to zero and the uh, charge density is also equal to zero. Okay, And uh, this, uh, this means that if you combine these two equations, basically if you take uh, this, this one and this one, and you take the curl of that, so you take the curl of the curl of the electric field equals minus mu partial with respect to time of the curl of h and on the other one you have the opposite so these two are very symmetric so um, by doing that and using some of the uh, identities you can find in any calculus book you can uh, uh, show that uh, the um, um, uh, electric fields uh, comply with the wave equation which basically says that the Laplacian of the electric field uh, minus 1 over c squared, the second derivative of e with respect to time is equal to zero, and the Laplacian of h, the magnetic field, minus 1 over c squared is equal to the derivative of the, the second derivative with respect to time and equals zero. So um, you can do that uh, as part of your homework. Um, let's now consider uh, from now on uh, a plane wave. And what does that mean? That uh, a, a, the, the amplitude of the wave can be written as proportional to e to the i uh, k, where k is a, is a, is a, is a fixed vector dot r minus omega t. So uh, this this uh, this is a plane wave, and the plane is defined by the k vector. So if the k vector is 
is pointing in that direction, the planes are uh, the planes that, that, that the wave um, the, the represent the wave fronts are perpendicular to that k uh, vector. Okay, so uh, great. So now let's um, let's see. Uh, one additional thing that uh, uh, will be part, I mean, to do it yourself, uh, I just want you to, to, to notice is that um, the uh, derivative with respect to time, in this case, when, when the dependence is a plane wave, as, as we saw here, so when the dependence is of this type, um, uh, in that case, the um, uh, time uh, derivative uh, converts into, oh, sorry, uh, into simply multiplying by i omega, and uh, also that the, um, uh, the spatial uh, Nabla operator uh, converts into multiplying by i k. Okay, so whenever you apply uh, the, the, the time derivative to uh, a um, um, plane wave, what you obtain is uh, i, the frequency, and when you apply the nav operator uh, to a uh, plane wave, what you obtain is i, k, the, the, the wave vector of, of this plane wave. Um, okay, again, uh, you, you, you have to show that it's, it's actually very simple. Um, uh, now, for in this case, the, 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 the Maxwell's equations that I drew in the previous uh, slide, so these ones that are over here, uh, translate uh, for a plane wave uh, into the following. So what you have is that uh, k vector cross uh, e um, equals mu omega h, um, you have that k cross um, h equals uh, minus i, uh, sorry, mi minus epsilon, ep sorry, 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 um, minus epsilon um, omega e, uh, you have that k dot e equals zero, and that k dot h equals zero. Okay, so uh, from the, from from these two expressions here in the bottom, this one and this one, what we obtain is that the electric uh, and the magnetic fields, they, they both uh, perpendicular to the k vector. So they, uh, this is something that you probably already know, that um, electromagnetic waves are transverse waves. So in, in, the, the, electric, the, oscillation, the electric field that is actually what is oscillating in, in this wave uh, is always perpendicular to the uh, propagation direction. And this is true also for the, for the um, uh, magnetic field. And not just that, from these equations you can also show that uh, um, the electric and magnetic fields are uh, orthogonal to each other. So this, is, this, is, uh, this comes from, from these two other relationships. So um, if H is orthogonal to K, then E is also orthogonal to K because of this or this equation. So it's, it's, uh, it's actually very interesting, the, 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 the electromagnetic waves, and I'll try to put the electric field in, sorry, um, the electric field in blue and the magnetic field in red, um, are something that uh, look a little bit like that. So um, the electric field oscillates in one direction. Um, then there is the propagation direction, so this is the propagation direction, this is the electric field there, and uh, the magnetic field lies on the plane that is perpendicular to that, to that one, so the, the, the magnetic field, sorry, um, mm, the magnetic field uh, looks something like that.
So the magnetic field lies on this other plane over here. Um, so this is H, this is E, here, and uh, this here is the K direction. So uh, K lies over here. Um, in this, in this propagation direction. So uh, they, they form uh, uh, what is called a, a set of orthogonal uh, vectors um, in, in three dimensions. And uh, all these uh, mutual orthogonality relationships are, are true. Uh, now, from, from these equations, you can also show that um, the uh, magnetic field, so the, the amplitude of the magnetic field, um, is equal to epsilon omega over k, uh, the magnitude of the electric field, uh, where um, this is um, um, so, so basically that the two um, magnitudes are proportional to each other, and um, this is this is also. Um, true that these two waves are coupled to each other, so, that, so they travel together. You cannot have just an electric oscillation or just a magnetic oscillation. You have to have the combination of the two, and this is directly a consequence of uh, Maxwell's equations. Okay, so, um, right, so the, 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 the next thing I want to talk about is uh, how these, uh, um, these waves behave when they find an interface between two materials. So again, I'll draw here my, my uh, little schematic. Um, so you have a uh, medium with refractive index 1, with refractive index 2. Uh, so you have a coming wave, which is represented by a vector k. Right? This is the vector k. So, so it's a plane wave coming into, into the, the interface between these two materials. Uh, you have uh, a reflected um, uh, k, a uh, reflected wave which has a k vector k prime, and uh, we will have another wave that is transmitted uh, through the interface, and that uh, has a, uh, a wave vector k two prime. So this is again just just putting names to things and, and uh, trying to, to understand what's going on. And, and the, the time and, and, and space dependence of these, of these uh, three waves, they are all plane waves. So they, they are all proportional to, the, to e to the i, so to e to the i k, k dot r uh, dot r minus omega t um, and uh, and so on. So all, all three waves remain plane waves. Um, now, the 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 since there is or if there is and, and there is uh, um, a fixed relationship between all these three waves, uh, the the what we can show is that then that there is no time dependence. So all three, all these waves, um, it's, it's, it's clear that all three arguments will have to be the same, the three arguments of the three uh, waves. So all these, um, all these three, for the three particular case, waves, uh, so for k, for k prime, and for k three prime, prime, the arguments will have to be the same, and since the time and the frequency do not change between between all three waves. Uh, what we obtain is that um, um, k. Oh, sorry, uh, k dot r uh, equals k prime dot r and equals k two primes dot r. Okay. So uh, the question is, what can we um, obtain from these uh, relationships? And uh, let's pick uh, um, an axis uh, 
system. So uh, let's let's put the um, axis origin and the directions in such a way that makes our life easy. So let's assume that that we have. Uh, I'll try to make a three-dimensional drawing here. So bear with me. Uh, so let's assume this this plane is the plane of the boundary between the two materials. So below this plane you have one material, above you have the other. Um, so let's choose the uh, coordinate system in such a way that um, the origin lies uh, somewhere on the surface um, in, in, so in, in this interface and uh, we choose the orientation of the, of the axis um, such that um, the um, X axis, sorry, the Y axis is normal to the plane. Uh, the X axis is parallel to the plane, and um, basically, this plane, the plane, the X Y plane, contains the incident um, um, uh, uh, vector. So this this K vector over here, this one will be somewhere there on that uh, plane, and that's called the plane of incidence. I'll, I'll draw it just in a second. Uh, so uh, this is the x um, direction and uh, let's put the set direction over here. So set is normal to the incidence plane. So we will have this incidence plane over here. So it's, it's a plane that is normal to this to the uh, interface. So the interface plane is um, so these two planes are perpendicular to each other depending on how you see them. Uh, I mean, they, they will be perpendicular to each other, and, and, and you can uh, visualize them something like that. And uh, um, also, um, so this, let me just make a quick note here. This is the plane of incidence. And uh, this means that the incident um, uh, k vector is contained in that plane, so it it, it comes in, in it can be uh, uh, seen. Uh, it, it, we chose the, the the coordinate system in such a way that the the k vector um, has only x and y components, but no set no set components. Um, right. So. Um, the position vector, so the position refers to the, the to the position uh, uh, of the of the um, where we will be doing the uh, analysis. This could be the origin, or it could be any other position on the on the interface plane. So this is this is what we are trying to 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 analyze now. What happens in the interface? So the interface has a, a, a zero component in the y direction. Um, so this means that uh, the um, R vector can be written as x, oops, sorry, uh, zero um, z, and uh, also from from the choice of the orientation of the axis, uh, we know that the k vector uh, over here, the k vector um, um, has only k x and k y. Um, uh, components. So this is the way it is. So from this, uh, these relationships here that that uh, we obtained from from just looking at what happens um, with all three waves at the interface, um, uh, we can uh, we can deduce uh, what follows. Um, so what we have is that k dot r, k dot r will be equal to x. Um, kx, right? Um, k k prime dot r will be equal uh, to kx prime x plus k set uh, prime set, and uh, we also have uh, that um, k. Two primes dot r will be equal to k um, x two primes x plus k set two primes uh, um, z, right? So uh, 
since this is true for um, all values of the um, position vector, um, what we um, what we obtain is that since this is true for any set uh, component. So it doesn't really matter if we if we are uh, uh, in any position on the surface plane on the on the um, on the um, interface plane. Um, what we obtain is that uh, from, from these two, from the fact that these are all equal, is that uh, k set um, k set prime equals to k set two primes uh, equals zero. Okay, so um, I'm sorry. I'm just going to uh, fade myself away. Uh, right, um, and uh, you can see the expressions there. Um, so um, what we obtain is that basically all three, uh, all of these three vectors are uh, coplanar. So all three k, um, not just k, but k prime and and uh, k two primes, are all on the same uh, incident plane, incidence plane. So. This incident plane, of course, is just a mathematical thing, and uh, all three vectors lie on the same plane. So this is the very first thing we we, we have to understand that when there is a um, this this phenomenon of interaction between on an interface, um, the incident uh, k vector, the reflected k vector, and the transmitted k vector, they all lie on the same plane. So the although the trajectory of the radiation gets changed. It doesn't get changed arbitrarily. It just uh, uh, um, it's restricted to maintain the same uh, plane of propagation, so to speak. So, and this is called the, the plane of incidence. Okay, great. Um, so, um, right. So now, from I mean, from from these, uh, now we we know a little bit about the directions. If we if we do the um, the uh, I'll, I'll draw my um, a little um, schematic again here. Uh, so this is k. Uh, you have uh, k prime. I'll just draw the normal to the uh, interface here, and I'll just uh, put here k two primes. Um, uh, what happens here is now, now we know that we can draw them in the same plane, so it's, there's no need to do a three-dimensional uh, drawing. We know now we are drawing on the, on the incidence plane. And uh, let's uh, give um, the angles that are here uh, names. So uh, this is going to be the angle of incidence, which we denote by a theta i. Um, we will have the um, uh, angle of reflection we will call uh, theta prime and uh, we will have the uh, um, refraction angle which we will call theta r okay uh, so uh, what we obtain uh, in, 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 if you remember these three ex expressions we had the uh, dot product between k and r uh, in this case is uh, the magnitude of k um, times the uh, sine of, um, of theta incidence um, k two prime dot r will be proportional as well to uh, the magnitude of k prime um, um, sine of theta prime and uh, k two primes uh, dot r will be um, uh, k two primes um, sine of uh, theta r. Okay. So all these three relationships, uh, with the exception of the magnitude of r, which uh, is, it doesn't really matter too much at the moment, uh, are uh, because of the projection of these all these k vectors on the horizontal axis and uh, these essentially uh, come from well of course this should be the cosine of the angle between the um, x-axis and the and the uh, k each one of the k vectors 
Uh, but of course, we can use the fact that that cosine of the angle is the sine of the complementary angle. So uh, th this this is where these uh, three relationships come from. Um, now. Um, that being said, something we know is that k and k prime, for example, they're both on the upper part, so they are both in the in the in the first material, and therefore their magnitude should be the same. And since we know that k, the magnitude of k, and equals the magnitude of k prime, uh, this also means that uh, theta i equals theta prime. And um, this is uh, actually a very important result because this means that the reflection angle is the same as the incidence angle. So, so this, this uh, uh, part here, these two k vectors are symmetric with respect to the normal. And, and therefore, if we think of, of rays of uh, light, this means that uh, yeah, the, the incoming ray and the outgoing uh, ray after reflection, they should come at the same angles. Okay, so um, now in addition to all of that, uh, what we have is that uh, now we can uh, write the relationship between the, the, the uh, k2 prime, I'm just going to write here, sorry, uh, the magnitude, so k2 prime divided by k, that is going to be omega divided by uh, u through primes where uh, u is the uh, speed of light on on the on the second medium omega divided by u where u is the uh, speed of light in the uh, other medium and of course we can cancel the omega and also multiply in the upper and the lower part uh, by c so we obtain c divided by u two primes divided by omega sorry it's not omega c uh, c divided by u and this will be equal to n um, 2 divided by n 1 and uh, this means that uh, from, from this one we can obtain uh, the following relationship that um, um, n 2 sine uh, theta r divided by n1 sine of theta i will be equal to 1 by dividing this, uh, th these two relationships here, so dividing this one by this one and doing the correct the, the, the substitutions. And uh, from this what we obtain is that um, from this we obtain um, n1 sine theta i equals uh, n2 sine um, theta r, okay? And uh, this is basically the main result we wanted to achieve. So this is Snell's law. This is the relationship between the angles of uh, incidence and refraction uh, when an electromagnetic wave travels or passes through the interface between two materials. So once we have Snell's law, uh, which is the relationship between the angles uh, of incidence and refraction, now uh, the other part that we should worry about is really the, uh, um, the magnitudes. How do the magnitudes of the incident reflected and refracted um, waves relate to each other? And, uh, and, and for that, uh, we will take again the um, uh, curl uh, equations, uh, in, in particular this one, uh, evaluated in, in, the three, in the three cases. So the incident, the reflected, and the refracted uh, um, uh, waves. And um, this is H um, equals 1 over uh, mu omega. Um, k across e that's the uh, equation one of the uh, uh, Maxwell's equations in the um, in the upper um, uh, medium in, in the, for the incident uh, wave 
Then we have the same for the uh, refracted, for, sorry, for the reflected wave, which is one over uh, mu omega uh, k times uh, e prime, and we have also that h uh, two primes equals one over mu omega k across uh, e two primes. Um, and um, let, let's call these three equations one, two, and three. So this is uh, one, uh, two, and uh, three. And uh, um, yeah, let's, let's carry on from there. So again, th this is all because uh, uh, they are plane waves and we can just uh, uh, substitute the uh, time derivative by i omega, the uh, space derivative or the, or the Laplacian operator by i k. Um, and uh, uh, all these waves um, share the time and space dependent uh, dependence of e to the i k dot r uh, minus omega t, where just the k is different in each one of them, but the rest is uh, is um, the same. So okay, it, now we have to divide into two cases. What happens? Uh, when the, and I'll try to draw again uh, uh, a little three-dimensional diagram. So let's say this is the interface, the surface of the two materials, the interface in between the two materials, um, and we will draw here the incidence plane, so it's, it's somewhere near. And uh, from these incidence planes, um, we have the incoming K, the reflected k, they are both contained in this, in this uh, uh, incidence plane, and we have the refracted wave as well. Um, and, and again, we have in, uh, now we have two cases. We have one case in which the electric field is uh, oscillating in this direction. That means that if this is the incidence plane, the oscillation of the electric field happens uh, perpendicular to, to the incidence plane. And we have the uh, second case in which the electric field now oscillates on the um, uh, on the uh, incidence plane. So this imaginary plane that we drew there with the uh, yellow dots. Uh, so there are, there are basically two cases: when the electric field oscillates out of that plane, and when the electric field oscillates on that plane. And uh, uh, these are called the transverse electric and transverse magnetic cases. The transverse electric refers to the fact that uh, so is, 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 would be the, the green case. So it's the case in which the electric field oscillates perpendicular to the um, to this uh, imaginary plane, uh, which we call the incident plane again. Or uh, the transverse magnetic is the case in which the electric field oscillates in 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 the plane. And, and, and therefore, the magnetic part is oscillating transverse to the uh, um, incidence plane. Okay, so uh, these two cases again, um, we, we have um, uh, case number one. Um, case number one, uh, we have electric field parallel to the boundary. So the boundary between the two the two materials, and we have the uh, second play case where the um, uh, electric field is not perpendicular. Uh, um, sorry, when when the uh, the magnetic field, sorry, the magnetic field is parallel um, to the magnet. The magnetic field is parallel to the boundary. Okay, um, and, and uh, again, this is called the, the transverse magnetic mode. The other one is called the transverse electric mode, and uh, uh, well, transverse, uh, transverse electric and transverse magnetic cases. And uh, the two cases differ a little bit. So let, let's let's try to do the math. Uh, for each one of them. Okay, so let's analyze now the uh, transverse electric field. The transverse electric field is that one in which the electric field is perpendicular to the incidence plane and therefore it is parallel to the 
uh, interface between the two materials. Um, so this means that uh, we will have the following uh, um, uh, continuity um, condition uh, for the electric field. So the electric field of the incident wave plus the electric field of the reflected wave will have to be the same as the electric field of the uh, refracted wave. And also, um, the, um, from, from, the, from the equations 1, 2, and 3 from our previous slide, you remember these ones, we can obtain the following. The uh, magnetic field um, cosine of uh, theta i uh, plus the uh, magnetic field of the uh, reflected wave uh, cosine of theta i uh, will have to be equal to minus the uh, magnetic field of the transmitted wave cosine of uh, theta r. Um, so this is just imposing uh, continuity on, on, the, on the projections. And uh, uh, we also get that minus k um, times e um, cosine of theta i uh, plus k prime uh, e prime uh, cosine of theta i will be equal to minus k two primes e two primes cosine of theta r. Okay, so from this uh, from this um, two equations from these uh, three equations, uh, th these are the, the continuity equations basically for the for the electric and magnetic field components. Um, in the uh, in the case of the transverse electric fields. Now, for the case of uh, you remember we had the uh, transverse magnetic fields. Uh, we have now to impose the um, continuity of the uh, magnetic field. So, in the case of the transverse magnetic uh, uh, wave, uh, we have um, h minus h prime equals. Uh, H two primes. Uh, that's again imposing the continuity of the of the um, um, component parallel to the dielectric interface. Um, K E um, minus K prime E prime uh, equals K two primes E two primes. Um, and we also have that the electric field um, um, minus k, um, the electric field, cosine of uh, theta i um, plus k uh, prime e prime um, cosine theta i equals minus k uh, Two primes, two primes, e, uh, two primes, cosine of theta r. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, from from these equations now we can uh, uh, we can take them and and uh, substitute them in the following definitions. So uh, we will define the. Um, Reflection and transmission uh, Fresnel coefficients. They are called. Let me write them here. Uh, Fresnel coefficients coefficients. These Fresnel coefficients um, basically are the ratios of the amplitudes of the. Uh, transmitted and reflected waves with respect to the incoming uh, wave. So what we what we have is that, um, uh, let me write it with the right color, so the reflection coefficient, and let me put here all the transverse electric wave, which we also call Rs, um, is equal to E, prime divided by E 
for the transverse electric field, transverse electric case. Um, we also have TE, TTE, the transmission uh, transverse electric case, which we also call TS, uh, equals uh, the E2 prime divided by the E uh, here for the transverse electric case. Um, and we also have um, in the um, um, R T M, which is we call R P, uh, equal um, to the E prime divided by E in the transverse magnetic case and T. Um, Tm or Tp, which is called is equal to. Um, let me uh, remove myself from the image. Um, it's equal to e two primes divided by e in the transverse magnetic case. Okay, so these are just uh, the definitions. So we we just want to have basically a ratio between the amplitudes of the incoming wave, uh, sorry, the, of any of the two either reflected or refracted um, uh, wave with respect to the amplitude of the incoming wave. Um, now that being uh, said, uh, I'm going to come back. Uh, what we obtain is that if, if we substitute uh, I'm going back to the previous slide. So if we substitute all these expressions on, on this side, further down there. there. Uh, and uh, these definitions here of the Fresnel coefficients, um, what we obtain uh, is uh, the following. So the Rs is going to be um, cosine of theta i minus n2 over n1 cosine of theta r divided by cos theta i uh, plus n2 divided by n1 cosine theta r. Um, the um, t, um, sorry, the t S is going to be 2 cos theta i sine theta r divided by uh, sine theta i plus theta r um, r p r P, the reflection coefficient, um, is going to be um, minus n2 divided by n1 cosine of theta i plus cosine of theta r divided by n2 divided by n1 cos theta i plus um, cosine of theta r. And finally, the T um, p case is 2 cosine theta i sine theta r divided by sine theta i plus theta r cosine theta i minus theta r. Okay, um, so all of these are uh, again the Fresnel coefficients, these are the expressions and these ones are the ones that regulate now the not, not the angles but the amplitudes of the reflected and refracted uh, uh, waves. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's I think, um, uh, 
the most important part in terms of the um, of the transmission and, ref uh, and, and reflection amplitudes. However, I would like to finish uh, this, this uh, presentation uh, by discussing a little bit of what is the dependence of, uh, of these numbers uh, as a function of the, um, of the incidence angle. And uh, here we have uh, actually two cases. Let me just open a new, a new page. So uh, what I will draw here is not R or T or um, um, uh, I will I will just draw the, the reflection coefficients, but I will draw the squares of the reflection coefficients. And if you remember correctly, the uh, intensity, which is actually the, 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 the observable in optics, uh, the uh, light intensity is essentially um, the um, the square of the electric field amplitude. So that's why we use the uh, um, the Fresnel coefficients for power and not for electric field. Yet uh, just just remember that uh, R S equals R S squared equals R S the reflection coefficient the Fresnel co reflection coefficient um, for the power. So this is just uh, this is the Fresnel reflection coefficient for electric field. This is the Fresnel coefficient for power. It's just the total T, but it's, it's important to always check whether you're working with the capital or the non-capital ones, uh, just to be sure that, that you're think, doing things right. Um, so you have R, um, you have, uh, sorry, um, uh, TS squared equals TS, um, R P squared equals R, uh, R P and uh, T S T P squared equals R P. Okay, uh, so this is just a, a, a note on the side. Uh, now, uh, what we have is, I will just draw the reflection coefficients. You can imagine what the, the, the transmission ones will be. Um, and uh, I will draw two uh, different cases. So uh, this is the angle, the angle of incidence. Um, this is 90 degrees. 90 degrees and uh, if we take the uh, transverse electric uh, component what we have is a curve that uh, let me just put a few markers there this is the reflection coefficient um, and uh, this is um, the, tra the transverse electric case uh, starts uh, very low here, somewhere in around 5%, and it just goes up and up monotonously on, until it reaches roughly one at about, uh, it, it reaches one at 90 degrees. Um, this is the transverse uh, electric case. The transverse magnetic case, however, has a slightly different um, behavior. So uh, it does something like this. It touches zero somewhere around here, and then it goes up and reaches one at 90 degrees as well. Um, so there is one angle here, uh, which we call the Brewster's angle. Um, so this is called the um, Brewster's angle. Uh, in which the transverse magnetic uh, transverse magnetic um, reflection is exactly zero. This means that uh, the 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 wave when when it comes in the transverse electric um, polarization and uh, reaches the interface. If, if, if it uh, is coming at this correct angle, at this Brewster's angle, it will basically go through completely and nothing will be reflected. Uh, so there is no reflected wave, uh, which is uh, fairly interesting. And it's something we actually use in, 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 in various uh, cases. Uh, this is the case when the refractive index N1 is uh, smaller than N2. Uh, N2, sorry about that. Uh, so um, N 
two. So this means is, is, this is what happens when you go from a high refractive, in, sorry, from a low refractive index into a high refractive index medium. Uh, when the um, when the case is the opposite, so we can make uh, a new plot here. Uh, this is again uh, theta i. This is 90 degrees. Um, this is uh, one here. Um, I forgot to say one there. This is the uh, reflection coefficient there. And again, let me just uh, put some some uh, markers here. Um, so uh, in that case, uh, something even more interesting happens. Uh, again, this is we, we are now in the case where um, n1 is greater than n2. This is this, what this means is you're going now from a high refractive index into a low refractive index medium. Um, and uh, yeah, what happens is uh, the following. Um, the transverse electric field also starts somewhere here again more or less five percent reflection or so and the reflection starts going up and up and up and up and up and up and reaches one but it doesn't reach one at 90 degrees it reaches one before 90 degrees and then after that point it stays at one until it reaches 90 degrees um for the transverse magnetic field uh, for the transverse uh, magnetic uh case uh, what we uh, obtain is uh, something similar uh, to the previous one, but again with this slight change. So it starts more or less in the same value, it goes down, it reaches zero at the Brewster's angle, and then it goes up and it reaches one at the same angle, and then it also stays there uh, at one um, for higher um, uh, angles. So um, now we can identify Again, the Brewster's angle here, uh, I will just put a B there to, to identify it. But also something funny happens here. And this is what we call the total internal inter-reflection Oops, sorry. Um, angle okay and this is this is actually very important that if you're going from a low refractive index medium to a high refractive index medium sorry the other way around from a high refractive index medium to a low refractive index medium uh, uh, what you will find is that if you are coming at certain angle or beyond so it's if, 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 if the light is coming at a very recent angle um, what, what you will see is that there is total internal reflection. And this is, if, if you have, for example, been under a pool or, or, or under water at some point and you look up, you will see that the surface of the water, there is a circle over you where you can actually see what's happening outside the water. But if you go beyond this, this, this circle, beyond this cone, uh, what you see is a, a, a perfectly mirror-like reflection of the bottom of the pool. And, and that's exactly what you're seeing. What you're seeing is this total internal reflection um, case in which uh, basically the water is, 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 is fully reflecting all the amplitude and, and therefore uh, beyond this particular angle, um, all the rays are completely confined and, and, and stay inside. And this is a principle of operation of many, many interesting things, for example, uh, optical fibers and several other uh, devices, many, many types of wave, dielectric waveguides and so on. And um, therefore, this is a, a physical uh, principle. This is something that we actually use uh, for technological purposes in, 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 in many uh, situations. So, um, uh, we have discussed uh, the, um, the behavior of an electromagnetic wave in the case of reaching an interface between two materials. We first uh, uh, tried to understand or did understand, did the math to understand uh, the um, angles or the relationship of the angles between the incoming, the reflected and the transmitted or that we call the refracted wave. And we also uh, did the math in order to understand or to know expressions for the um, uh, 
amplitudes or the, re the, the relative amplitudes between all these three uh, all these three waves. So the, the ratio between the amplitudes of the reflected, the refracted, and the incoming uh, uh, or the incident um, uh, wave. So I would like to stop this lecture there. Uh, thank you very much for following, and uh, I'll see you next time.